please help me give a warm welcome to Matt Booth. I DJed my first wedding when I was 16 years old. That's 29 years ago in 1987. I've DJed 2,000 weddings. And I know by DJing 2,000 weddings, some crazy stuff happens. And I've seen it firsthand, and I've seen how people react to the crazy things that happen. I've DJed weddings in tornadoes, floods, and snowstorms. I DJed weddings where the power's gone off and the water sprinklers have gone on. <laughs> I once DJed a wedding where the caterer and the food didn't show up. You think, that's bad. I once DJed a wedding where the bride and groom didn't show up. <laughs> See, we can't control what happens to us. We can only control how we react to what happens to us. And the bride and groom's attitude towards events throughout the day can make or break the day. When I was 17 years old, I was DJing a wedding in East Dubuque, Illinois at Bittersweet on the Bluff. And according to my itinerary, it was time for the bride and groom to cut the cake. They're about to cut right into the cake, and out of the corner of my eye, I saw a flash. Here's a seven-year-old kid. He's running around the reception hall. He runs right past the photographer, runs right past me, and he runs right into the corner of the cake table. The cake wobbles, and it sways, and it falls right on the floor. And when something like this happens at a wedding reception, everybody turns and looks at the bride. <laughs> she burst into tears. And these weren't tears of joy. And I know when a bride cries out of sadness at her own wedding, it doesn't take very long, and most of the guests are starting to tear up. It was obvious that this had ruined her perfect day. And as they clean up the cake and get everyone seated back at the head table, I'm back to the itinerary, and it's my turn to introduce the father of the bride for a welcome speech. Now, he told a few jokes, and it, he did the best he could to get the evening back on track, but it didn't work so well. That was followed by speeches from the best man and maid of honor that were awkward. When they finally brought the food, it didn't taste very good. And the decorations at the beautiful reception hall seemed like they didn't even matter. Now, there was an ice sculpture in the corner, you know, the swans of love? Those swans were sweating profusely. It was, they were more like a puddle of gloom than swans of love. And when it was time to start the dancing, I played the best music from the best wedding artists, artists of all time. Elvis, right? The Beatles, the Rolling Stones, Bob Seger, ACDC, Cool and the Gang, right? And I couldn't get anyone out on the dance floor. I switched it up and I mixed songs from Casey Kasem's Top 40, right? From 1988, George Michael, Billy Ocean, Whitney Houston, Def Leppard. Nothing. I did everything I could to get people out here. I played the hokey pokey. I played the... I even played the chicken dance. Three times. That could have added to the problem. You see, a bride and groom's attitude towards that event, towards the wedding cake falling on the floor, sent the reception into a downward spiral of doom. Ten years after that, I'm DJing a wedding at the fairgrounds in Dubuque, Iowa. Now, the cake had already been cut, and it was the job of a 17-year-old kid to move the cake from the cake table into the kitchen so that it could be sliced up and plated and served to the guests. And so this 17... 
I don't think it was the same kid. <laughs> Couldn't have been the same kid. But he gets the cake onto the cart. And he starts wheeling it towards the kitchen. And he wheels it across the dance floor in front of the head table. He gets right in front of the bride and groom and the cart hits an orange power cord. <laughs> now the kid's strong and he holds onto the cart. But not the cake. And when something like this happens at a wedding reception, everybody turns and looks at This is the best wedding cake I've ever had. She's joined soon by the, by the groom and the rest of the wedding party and some of the guests all eating cake from the dirty dance floor, right? And so people are laughing and guests are having fun. And according to my itinerary, we have to introduce the father of the bride for a welcome speech. He was followed by the mess, best man and maid of honor. And I don't remember exactly what they said, but I remember thinking and feeling that the love between the bride and groom was genuine, and it was easy to see. Then they brought out the food. And I don't remember if it was roasted chicken or roast beef, but it was delicious, right? And the decorations at the fairgrounds, which is a barn, right? <laughs> The decorations were stunning. They were beautiful. And when it was time to start the dance, it didn't matter what song I played. Everybody danced. I didn't even have to play the chicken dance. <laughs> even the bride's grumpy old uncle, who hadn't danced with his wife since the day they got married in 1967, he brought her out here for a dance when we played Louis Armstrong. What a wonderful world, right? You see, we can't always control the events that happen to us. We can only control how we react to those events. And this bride and groom's attitude towards the cake falling sent the reception into an upward spiral of joy, right? Do you remember your wedding or a friend's wedding? What do people talk about? from your wedding. What do they remember? You see, long after the cake and the food are gone, long after the speeches are over, and long after the decorations are put away, and the last song is played by the DJ, people remember how they feel. And attitude is a huge part of that. And it's the same way in your professional life. Right? After the graphs and charts and presentations are all over, your customers, your coworkers, and your clients will remember how it felt to do business with you. And that is truly an attitude thing. Have you thought about the events that you're planning right now? What will people think and what will people talk about when they're over? What will the attitude be at the event? And what will people remember from that event? If you think I might be a good fit and could help you create a good event, I would love to talk to you. My name is Matt Booth, and I'll meet you at the cake table when they open those big doors in a little bit. Thank you. Matt Booth, everybody.